How's everybody doing? It's Joe here from Woopercast, and today I've got a brand new deck analysis for you of Vespa Gwyn post-rotation. Yeah, without its best friend, Battle Compressor. Um, basically, I've played a lot of Vespa Gwyn this season, and what I learned about it was that it's always able to adapt to the meta that it happens to be in. So I wondered, can it adapt to a meta without Battle Compressor in it? And actually, yeah, I think it can. I don't think uh, it's top tier. I don't think the list I have, at least, is top tier. I think it's still going to need a lot of work. But that's not really down to Vespaquin, that's mostly down to the fact that it's a really meta-reliant card in its, like, nature, you know? What you play it with, it, it can be good, but what you play it with will always change depending on what other people are playing. So, the list I have are the Pokémon I run. Um, while I think the engine is good and it plays really well, uh, and it's actually done quite well again in a good few different matchups that I've tested so far, I don't... I think maybe that, like... It, it really depends on what you're going to play against it on the day. And it really depends on how the meta shapes up, but I think what I'm trying to prove is that Vespaquin will adapt to it, and will still be a legitimate deck actually come Primal Clash onwards. Uh, so that's really the point of this deck analysis. And honestly, the list I have is really good. <laughs> it's, it plays very well, it's very fast, it's very consistent, uh, and you can definitely hit, hit for like one-shots on Megas for the last two prizes of a game. Uh, you still do an awful lot of damage. It gains a few things from Steam Siege that it didn't have before that allow it to sort of play in a completely different way. And uh, that's what I really want to show off today. First of all, I did actually record this already, but my iPod was set to photo mode instead of video mode, so that was great. Um, so I'm just going to pretend that didn't happen. And move straight on to our 4-4 combi line. 4-4 Vesper Gwen line, I mean. Obviously, main person of the deck. Be Revenge does 10 damage plus 20 more, or 20 damage plus 10 more uh, for each Pokemon in our discard pile. And that's obviously what we want to do, is get as many Pokemon in our discard pile and hit for massive numbers. Now, I did lay this out correctly before I started the video. And yep, we got this good. Okay. Don't want what happened in the last video where everything was like completely unreadable. Next up uh, is four unknown. What I'm going to show off now is all the cards that I believe, or all the Pokemon that I believe, are essential to the deck, and no matter what variant you're playing, you have to play these Pokemon. Uh, that's really what I'm trying to show off here. So, we got four unknown. This guy obviously becomes a lot more important without Battle Compressor, because he's a Pokemon that discards himself, and we don't have ways of automatically discarding any other Pokemon. Uh, so, unknown is an essential part of the deck, and we absolutely have to run it. You know, I used to cut down to, I think it was two, that I had in my last Vespicon list, and I thought it was fine. You can't do that anymore, I don't think. Uh, it's a very integral part of the deck now. Next up, and excuse the terrible proxies, but it's for Klefki from Steam Siege. Klefki from Steam Siege uh, has this ability that essentially when it's on your bench, you can attach it as a tool to one of your Pokémon. Uh, prevent all effects of attacks done by Megas to that Pokémon, including damage, and then discard it next turn. So it's a Pokémon that discards itself. But it actually has this really cool synergy with Unknown. Okay, so let's say I have two Klefki on the bench and one Unknown. I can use Klefki's ability to attach it to this Klefki. Then when I use this Klefki's ability, this one gets automatically discarded, and I'll attach it to this Unknown. Then I can use Unknown's Farewell Letter to get rid of both of them, and I've discarded three Pokémon. That's essentially one Battle Compressor. So that's a pretty nice synergy that you get. Also synergizes really well with Garbodor, um, because you can attach it to the Garbodor as a tool. Then during your opponent's turn, they don't have abilities, but coming back to your turn, it gets discarded. So you have abilities again. So, there's a few nice reasons why you run it. Um, also, just against Mega Decks, obviously, you basically prevent... You, you stuff them out for a turn, you stall them out for a turn, uh, which is great when you've only got 90 HP to work with. The way the ability works is that after you use it, it becomes a tool. So, even if your opponent plays Hexmaniac, the Klefki stays, and the ability stays. Um, so, they still can't hit through it. Unless they play Hexmaniac, then you can't use the Klefki's ability next turn, but you know how it works out. Uh, obviously, without Zerasic and Megaphone, this actually just becomes a lot more powerful anyway. So, Yep, they're all laid out fine. This is going well so far. Uh, we've got three Shaman EX next. Obviously, I'd like four, but that's a luxury more than a necessity, I think. Um, in terms of bench space, you never actually get to play down all four. There's no way you'd do it. One would always end up in the discard pile anyway. Uh, so, it's three for now. Obviously, we run this to draw cards. Look, you, you kind of have to. Um, it sucks because we want to just be using non X Pokemon, but it's, I think it's a necessity, unfortunately. So next up are the Pokemon that 
You don't need to run them, but I think personally, for going into an unknown format, these are the ones that I would choose, and they're the ones that I've been testing and playing around with so far, and I've had good results with. So first up is a 2-2 two, two Zeb Striker line. Zeb Striker, one of my favorite cards that I've never really gotten a chance to use, uh, because it's very clunky and awkward in most decks, but in Vespaquin it can really take advantage of it. So, essentially Crashing Bolt does 50 damage and 60 more if your opponent has a Fighting Resistance. So that's 110 damage, um, and a Lightning type means you're knocking out a Veltali X, you're knocking out Shame in the X, um, which is pretty cool. Shame in the X is pretty popular, and it's nice to kill that. Um, even like Baby of Veltals with Fury Belts on them is something you don't really want to overcommit for, and you don't have to if you have this guy. Um, it can kill Mega Rayquaza in one hit, even if they have Altaria in play, thanks to the Zap Zone ability. It's got plenty of uses. And um, even against other matchups where they're not playing Lightning-type attackers, they will still have Shamans on the board. And what I do, my first kill of the game most of the time, is actually a Zed Striker killing a Shaman. Because it's an easy two prizes, it means I don't have to commit a Vespiquin, um, and when the Zed Striker gets knocked out, that's two extra cards that go in the discard pile for the Vespiquin, so it kind of makes a lot of sense to actually lead off with it and try and kill a Shaman with it. So I quite like it in the deck for that reason. Uh, next up we have a 2-2 line of Garbodor. Garbodor, um, first of all, it gives you an auto win against Greninja if anyone's still playing that. Uh, yeah, there's no way you're going to lose to Greninja now. But Garbodor's just kind of cool, I think, going into an unknown meta, where you want things that are inherently powerful. Um, Garbodor is inherently powerful because there's no tool discard, but there's not a lot of decks that can sort of fit it in because not only do you need the 2-2 line of Garbodor, but you also need float stones. Uh, so it's kind of hard to commit to for a lot of decks, but Vespaquin can absolutely get away with it. So I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, no like particular matchups where I'm like, yes, I definitely want the Garbodor against that, but it does definitely come up, especially because we only need our abilities maybe for the first two, three turns. Uh, so we're not too hindered by it ourselves. So yeah, that's why the Garbodor is in there. Also, like I said, synergizes well with Klecky in a really kind of funny way. Finally, one Mangino. So, like I said about Tool Discard going out of the format and about Zerasic and Megaphone are now gone, we have Mangino to clean up. So the attack cleaning up discards a Tool card attached to one of your opponent's Pokémon. Um, this is really the best option we have for discarding tools, but why would we want to discard tools? First of all, I mean, I guess sometimes Garbodor is annoying, now we have an answer to that. The main reason I'm running this is actually to deal with Fury Belts. So we can generally hit 170, 180 when we want to against EX Pokemon. But it's following that up with another Vespaquin to hit the remaining like 40 to kill it with the Fury Belt on means we're actually sacrificing like a 2-2 line of Vespaquin and we don't want to be doing that. We want to conserve our Vespaquins as much as possible. So being able to send up the Mangino and even if our opponent retreats the Fury Belt at Pokemon, uh, we can still pick it off with cleaning up because obviously we pick off the tool, the HP goes down, it dies from our previous hit. So that's kind of why Mangino's in here. Also a salt vest is a really big issue for us because we only play four double colorless energy as our energy count. Uh, so a salt vest can really hold us back. This used to be a town map. I feel like I lost more games where I had the town map than when I had the Mangino. And there were more times where I said, oh, I wish I had Mangino here as opposed to, well, I wish I had town map here. To fitting them both in would be nice, but if I could fit in everything I wanted in this deck, it would be like 80 cards. So, <laughs> can't really do that, unfortunately. So, Alright, that's it for the Pokémon. It's 28. You can't go too much lower than that. You could with Battle Compressor, but not without it, because um, you just want Pokémon in hand to discard with Ultra Balls and Sycamores. So, you really need to be running as high a count as possible. I'd love more than this, but I don't think that's uh, actually possible. So, onto the support line, and we have three Professor Sycamore. I'll just bunch these up a bit more so that they're easier to fit on. Four would be great. Um, like I said though, 20 extra cards would be great in this list. Uh, it just sucks that we don't have the room for this. There is a card you could cut for the fourth Sycamore, and I'll explain that later on. But for now, we'll move on into two Lizond. Uh, you have to run two now without Battle Compressor. Even if you're running something like Puzzle of Time, you have to run two, just because you have to find it in the first place. Um, even if you're running Town Map, you really have to draw into the Lazond at some point. Uh, and running one, you're just never going to find it, or you're not going to find it consistently enough when you need it. Uh, without ba with Battle Compressor, yeah, you could just discard it and you're fine then, but without it, you absolutely need both of them, because you need it in hand. Uh, we have one N. Plenty of times where I wanted Shuffle Draw, where I had like either 
energy or special charge or super rod or something in hand but I really didn't want to stick a more away uh, that's where N comes up it's actually quite a nice addition and finally one Pokemon Ranger the sole reason this is here is otherwise we are bodied by Giratina so yeah and hey it does it does the job you can beat Giratina a lot easier than you can without the Ranger so it's it earns its spot in the deck for sure other thing I tried for supporters was Psychic's Third Eye. This did not end well at all. Um, yeah, Third Eye was, is really bad. For those of you who don't know, you discard as many cards from your hand as you want, and then draw that many cards from your deck. And you also get a look at your opponent's hand, which is kind of cool. But the issue there is, like, I'd have, say, two Pokémon in my hand, and I'd be like, okay, I'll Psychic's Third Eye away them, and i draw two cards, and effectively I've used a worse Tierno, uh, and Sycamore would draw me seven. So... No. Psychic Third Eye is a cool idea, but in execution it didn't really work. Okay, on to the items. And we have a lot of four counts. Actually, we don't. I don't know why I said that, but... <laughs> four Ultra Ball, obviously. More important than ever now, because we need to discard things from our hand. Four VS Seeker. Four Trainer's Mail. And three Level Ball. So, the four Trainer's Mail, and three Level Ball, and three Sycamore is something that's kind of... I've been messing around with a lot. Um, I've had a fourth level, level ball, I've had a fourth Sycamore, but I think the fourth Trainer's Mail is the biggest, is the best compromise and sort of the most consistent option out of them all. Um, a lot of the times I draw the Sycamore when I had the four and I'd be like, well, I wish this was a Trainer's Mail instead. Uh, the four Trainer's Mail sort of makes sense, more sense for consistency. We run a really high level ball count, and this is mostly because we want Pokemon in hand to discard with Sycamore and with Ultra Ball. Uh, and also we can just level ball for an unknown or a Klefki and get rid of that instantly. Um, and of course, it finds all of our Vespiguin pieces, it makes the deck a lot more consistent than it otherwise would be, so I think it definitely earns the spot. And yep, I have room for the last line of cards. This is the happiest day of my channel. So we got one Special Charge and one Super Rod. Special Charge is great because it allows us to run just four DCE, and that saves us an awful lot of space in the list. If you are running Puzzle of Time, you can cut the Special Charge, obviously, but where do you put the puzzle of time in? I've tried cutting the trainer's mail for it. Really, don't do that. <laughs> Your consistency will drop through the floor. I've tried cutting some level balls for it, but I really missed the level balls at the time, and single puzzle of time is just not a great substitute for level ball. Single puzzle does have synergy with unknown, so you've got that going for you, but ultimately, I mean, I would love to fit in the puzzle of time. I have no idea where I'd put it. Uh, maybe you'd even cut a sycamore and go down to two, but Without Battle Compressor, like I said, you really need the thing in hand. So it's kind of a conundrum, but if you can find space for the level ball in here, uh, fair play to you. It would be really nice to have the Puzzle of Time in, but what can you do? Two Floatstone. Maybe you could go down to one... Like, off the top of my head, I'm thinking, cut one Floatstone, cut one Special Charge, but you've still got two more cards that you need to cut to find room for the puzzles. Um, yeah, the Floatstone are great, they go with Garbodor. Uh, most of the time I put them on as a striker or a Shaman because it just happens to be on my board or I happen to start with it. And obviously, you know, you want to get into Combi. You don't always start with Combi, so that's where Flowstone comes in. And finally we have two Forest of Giant Plants. Forest is a necessity in the deck, honestly. Uh, you wouldn't think it, but when you're speeding through your deck in, in your 20 minute turn one, it's really, really important to have, like, to be able to play down your Vespiquins because otherwise you end up Ultra Balling them away or Sycamoring them away and then you can't find them later and even with Super Raw that's a little difficult to do. Um, so Forest is great at just making sure that you always have access to your Vespiquins. The Super Raw essentially then in combination with this basically means that every single game we can guarantee we have like five Vespiquins ready to go and that's super powerful. And finally to round out the energy count it is four double colors. A uh, few other things you could add to the deck. Parallel City will be great, obviously it discards Pokemon. I think a lot of people will be playing Parallel City, and I would rather counter Parallel City myself. Both sides of it actually hurt this deck because the other side uh, prevents us from doing damage. Um, it would be really nice, but I think it would be too hard to time ultimately. And I wouldn't want to run more than one copy because I think people are going to want to counter Ray with Parallel City, and that makes it harder for us to play ours if we go second. So. I personally think the forest is just too important as well not to find on turn one that having the two of those just makes way too much sense. Uh, Zorork could also come into here, but right now I think because I'm not running dark energy, I can't use the break, uh, I don't have muscle bands in here so our damage is very limited, 
Um, target whistles out of format as well, just random things like this. And also I think Garbodor is just more inherently powerful and it's so powerful and the fact that I can get away with it is really, really nice. Um, that I think Zorork's a cool option, but I don't think it's super necessary. We have enough attackers outside of it. Um, Octillery is something else you could run instead of the Garbodor line. I tried this, did not like it. Basically, I set it up so that it would be like I put it up late game so that I could survive uh, late ends to one and stuff like this. But it never really worked in practice because I'd only get it up like once every five games and even when I did, I was like, I'd rather this was in my discard pile so I was doing more damage. So, no, the Octillery didn't really make much sense to me. Um, the other thing is you could just cut all of this completely and run Vespuco and Vileplume. I have not tried this yet, I'm going to. Um, I wonder how it will go with Bal without Balak Compressor, but I'm willing to give it a shot, personally. So anyway, that's really the deck. I don't think there's anything else I wanted to discuss about it, other than this is super fast. Uh, you get way more Pokemon in the discard pile than you think. You have plenty of good other attacking options available to you. Um, and with Special Charge, you can afford to run your list full of really crazy, like, high consistency counts, like I am doing here with three level ball and stuff like that. Um, and also, if you want to know why I love Klefki so much, this is the deck you play to find out. It's a very cool card. Um, so yeah, this is the list. Uh, I encourage you all to play around with it, come up with your own variants, because obviously Vespaquin lends itself to personal preference very heavily. Uh, yeah, this has been Joe from Whoopercast. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.